I'm working on, um, this is an encaustic board. Again, probably one of my favorite surfaces. And I wanna just show you how I get started because now I've got all this paint mixed up and I know you can't really see my palette anymore, but I'm gonna pull this over like this. And we're gonna try and get as far as we can. Now you might have that technique handout in front of you just to kind of take notes. Um, so I often, uh, this is a dry surface. So I wanna impress upon you that as the paint builds up and gets thicker and gloppy and wet, I won't be able to do as much, okay? So I have to work kind of fast just because we only have 15 minutes left or 10, or we can go a little over. But anyways, um, on a dry surface, obviously mark making, and I, I am a mark maker. And I just wanna show you that I'm not thinking, this is called my play stage. But what I am doing um, sort of like subconsciously is, well, if it's dark here, maybe it's light here. If it's rectilinear here, maybe it's curvy here. Now that's not a lot of thinking because after all we are adults. So we can handle a little bit more than a child can. And I tend to just play. And I want you to, um, for your homework is, get out some surface of one of the ones I, I told you about as far as supports go. Play with various types of um, dry mark making mediums. These are woodies, are not, these are not woodies, but these are like woodies. And I've got all these different things like marabou that gives you a nice juicy line like this. I'm not gonna do a lot of mark making because I wanna get some paint on here. So let's show you how to apply some paint. I've got a brayer here. I've got a silicone tool. I've got a Messermeister. Let's get some paint on there. And I, do, I don't even have like plain, uh, let's try that. In fact, I don't have a lot of room on my palette. So why don't I just put some straight on my board? Can I do that? Yes, as long as I add cold wax medium to it. So. I'm gonna grab some grab some one-to-one -one cold wax medium. That's about right there. Mix it right on the board. You can do that. You can also do it on your palette. But this is Indian yellow, right? Without anything added to it. No white, no black, no um, tones. Now look how intense that is, right? But I was talking to you about addition and subtraction. This is addition, okay? You can get it pretty thick. And this is subtraction when you take it off. And I just, you, some of the pencils gonna, uh, the dry mediums are gonna move. I don't personally worry about that because I'm a child. I want you to put yourself into the mindset of a three-year-old. And I don't want you to think about creating a masterpiece that is not the goal. Your job over the next week is to play like a three-year-old <laughs> and be an observer. Everything is new. Everything is new for the first time. Your tools, your support, your paints, tints, tones, and shades. Pretend you just don't know about any of these things. Okay, now that was easy because I have a dry surface. I've got dry mark making. I've got, um, I've put this stuff on with the Mastermeister and move that around. What about a brayer? And look at all these luscious colors I have. So let me move this over. Let's see if I can it over here like this. okay let's just grab a color how about this light yellow because you can see it the way to charge a brayer is get some paint on it and you want to go like in different directions and kind of go like this and lift up and what you should be seeing on the surface of your brayer is an even coating and i don't know if you can see it but it has kind of like this little bit of a texture on it. That tells you that it's um, evenly coated and you have to just go in different directions like that. And um, when your surface is dry, um, when your surface is dry, you can actually do just about anything. This is the time in cold wax medium that you have the most flexibility and you will see that on your technique chart. Um, and this is a pre gessoed board, comes that way from, um, ampersand. And I just want to show you like, um, I can go with this sprayer and I can mix, let's see here, I can mix a tone, grab another palette knife. Maybe I'll go with like a darker, I'll just take some of this over here. This is my darker green. And because I'm going from light to dark, 
and I charge my brayer. I don't really have to clean off my brayer. The way to clean off your brayer at the end of the day is with cooking oil. So that's really easy. Okay, so there's that. This is additive, right? And you can see I have no trouble at all. Um, and look, you can, you know, just again, I want you to observe what happens. I want you to play. Um, if you were really three, you wouldn't have any hard time playing, I don't think. And I know it's really hard it's, now. It took me a year to learn how to play. So I'm not, I don't wanna make you think that playing is easy because it's not, I mean, it took me a long time. Now you can also take just black like this. Uh, maybe I'll put some bits like that. Maybe I'll take a brayer and I'll do this. Again, I'm just like, I, I have never done this exact thing before, right? This is the first time. So in that way, I feel like I am a beginner. Now notice I've made a pattern and I just used black because I, I knew that that would really show. But I can also go this way and I can go this way. They're like little footprints and notice how it gets lighter. So that's an observation, okay? Just to keep that in your mind. What about, um, I'm still in the additive mode here. So you can take your silicone tool um, you can use straight gray. Nobody says you have to take a gray and add it to color. And anyone who's ever like been in any of my courses or anything like that knows how much I love gray. And the reason for that is because it isn't until you see what color is not that you realize what color is. And a gray, um, I don't, you can't see this, but I think this is so incredible. This is called simultaneous contrast. There's so much yellow around this and the complement of yellow is purple. This gray is black and white. There's no purple in there. But if you were here in my studio, you would see that this gray has taken on a purple cast. And that's simultaneous contrast. And I find that to be super amazing. So you can go thick and you can go thin, right? So this is medium and, and obviously that's super thick. You can take, I'm gonna take some deli paper and show you some pigment stick. I haven't done that yet. So I'm kind of running out of space. I need this out of the way. So again, your homework is to mix paint, pins, tones, and shades, make a color swatch. And if you happen to have a pigment stick that you want to play with, this is, I want to show you how you would open one of these. So you take the top off, you take your stick out. It's got a little plastic coating on the end. And this is only R enough that happens to be exactly like this. You take a blade and you want to get up. It's got a skin on it. See, there's nothing coming off here because it's hardened. So you have to um, get out a blade or just, just, you can see that the skin comes right off with the blade. And I'm just going to kind of encourage it to come off a little bit. You don't have to get the skin off the entire tip because you're not going to use the entire tip. And obviously as you remove the skin, you are losing some paint. So now I've got a stick that has some um, revealed areas. How does this work on my board, depending on where I put it? So if I go where it's completely dry, I mean, there's that beautiful purple. If I go here, and again, I, I told you that I like marks and you know, what if I wanna go kind of crazy with my marks? Well, you can do that with your pigment stick and then you could take either wax paper or the deli paper and just go like this. Okay, so you can kind of see why this is called monoprint because you're, you're basically printing with your finger. And I grabbed some paint there. Okay, not a lot of it came off, but you know, again, depending, as it gets wetter, you know, you're going to find that you just can't do as much. So part of your um, experiment here is what happens as your paint gets thicker. Now, if this is dry, how is this going to monoprint? Maybe that'll dry. Maybe that'll monoprint a little bit better. This is dry. And there's the monoprint. Obviously, if I put it on a dry area, that's going to be pretty good. It's just that it didn't work very well over wet paint and you wouldn't expect it to. So there's the original and then here is um, the monoprint. I'm just trying to get it to show. Okay, so um, 
where things are super thick, you can, you know, manipulate it, right? So I've got this very thick patch of paint here. What can I do with it? Well, you know, some people like to paint with a palette knife. So what if I did this? Um, sometimes what I love is like to have thick and thin. So this would be kind of thick like this. And sometimes you really have to work at an area to get it to be like, there are no brush marks. There's no palette knife marks. You know, what if you want it to be really smooth like that? So I've just smoothed that out. And there are a couple of things you can do. You can take a skewer and you can draw into it. Right, so that's subtractive. You can take the finer point and just, again, make marks. You can take some of your deli paper go on top of that. Now, this is jelly paper over very wet, juicy paint. And it comes off like that and it transfers very well because it's very thick. So the way to work when your uh, painting gets thicker and wetter and gloppier is as long as you're working thicker and wetter, you can do a lot, you can keep going. And so what I'd like you to do over the next week is push, you know, these various techniques and see how far, like one monoprint, for example, how, and it doesn't have to be um, all on your painting. You can have part of it off your painting. So notice it's going off the edge here. Now it's getting lighter, notice that. So how far can you go? And what if I catch some of this black? Can I monoprint that? Probably. So I want you to have like this very experimental attitude. You can also add collage paper. I have some various things here. How do you collage? Um, here's some gold leaf that I've attached to the backing paper. And the reason I do that is so that I can either tear it or cut it, you know. You know, if anyone who's used gold leaf knows that um, if you don't do, if you don't adhere it to the backing paper, it's gonna fly away. And so the only thing you ever need to do collage with cold wax and oil, two things. You need to keep in mind that the thinner, the better. This is very thin. Cardstock is probably too thick. Printer paper is fine. And this is a book paper. So I just wanna show you that um, if you like collage, you can certainly do that. And your only glue is your cold wax medium with or without Galka gel. So I'm gonna put it on the back of this. Um, so that's the glue on the bottom and you just stick it down like this, wherever you want and just tap it down with your hand. And what I like to do, I mean, you wanna, you know, to really lock it in, you, you need to put cold wax medium over the top, but I just wanna put a bit of wax paper over the top just to protect, um, keep things clean. Take a brayer or your hand or whatever and just smooth it over. And that's how you can add your, um, and now this is gonna tear some away, but that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, maybe I'll try and move it over somewhere. Yeah, that kind of works. Not sure how much that will stick. This stuff is pretty thin and flimsy. So let's try a little bit of this um, book paper. I can also, because there is paint down here, like paint is like the glue, right? So if I stick this down, all I really need is some cold wax medium over the top. And this is, this is this guy, just a little bit. Again, that's your glue over the top. And if you, you have to kind of watch the edges, um, like you come in the next day and if you notice the edges popping up, then you just need to put a little bit more cold wax medium underneath the collage piece because again this is the only thing you have paint you know could be paint and your cold wax medium and I, I just again like to um to keep things a little bit clean you just smush it down and then watch the edges when you come in the next day hopefully it's going to be okay so that's kind of um the gist of what we're doing